With Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 on the horizon, it feels like the perfect time to remind the world of exactly why the Guardians are so great. These intergalactic superheroes have battled the forces of evil for almost 50 years now. Or at least some incarnation of the group has, anyway. If that sounds confusing, then keep watching because we've got plenty of Guardians trivia you've probably never heard before. The Original Guardians Sure, Star-Lord and Groot are awesome, but they're total newbies to the Guardians of the Galaxy. The original team was created in 1969 as a parallel to DC's Legion of Superheroes. The team was based in the 31st century and included very different members. Vance Astro from Earth, Martin X from Pluto, Charlie 27 from Jupiter, and finally, one you may almost recognize, Yondu from Centauri 4. The foursome initially joined forces in Marvel Super Heroes No. 18 to battle an alien race known as the Badoon. The team would soon grow to take on two additional members, Starhawk and Nikki. A Wild Star-Lord Appears Once upon a time, Marvel published a black-and-white magazine called Marvel Preview. The experimental title provided creators with the opportunity to do stories about characters a bit too far outside the mainstream. Star-Lord was one of them, first appearing in 1976. Although the character continued to pop up here and there over the years, it wasn't until the 2004 series Thanos that he officially returned. In this incarnation, his backstory was tweaked and his earlier adventures were ruled as being outside Marvel's main continuity. But make no mistake, the purists still remember. The Milano You may have picked up that Star-Lord's cinematic ship is called the Milano. And no, it's not named after the delicious cookie. Director James Gunn tweeted in July of 2014 that the ship is actually named after actress Alyssa Milano, which falls perfectly in line with young Peter Quill's 1988 abduction. After all, the pubescent Quill disappeared from Earth just as Milano was the most famous 16-year-old on the planet due to her role in Who's the Boss? I Am Groot It was all the way back in the 1960s Tales to Astonish No. 13 that Groot made his debut. At the time, the creature of Walking Wood came from Planet X, was much more talkative, and was bent on capturing humanity. Within a few pages, Groot is defeated by a guy with a box of termites, and it takes decades for the merciless mahogany to turn up as anything other than a guest star in Ginkgo. Groot's reinvention took place around the same time as Star-Lord's, thanks to Marvel's epic 2004 crossover storyline, Annihilation Conquest. And even though movie Groot was reduced to a three-word script consisting of... I'm Groot. Yeah, you said that. Voice actor Vin Diesel read his line over a thousand times. I am Groot. Well, that's just as fascinating as the first 89 times you told me that. What is wrong with giving tree? During a red carpet interview with Marvel, Diesel explained. When I came into the recording booth, there was a 50-page document, and on the left-hand side it said, I am Groot, and on the right-hand side, it would have a paragraph or a sentence uh, explaining what he was really meaning or what he was really trying to say. Drax the real estate agent. Guardians of the Galaxy is pretty short on origin stories, so trying to explain the history of Drax the Destroyer is a little complicated. In the comics, he begins his existence in 1973 as real estate agent Arthur Douglas, who is then killed by Thanos and later resurrected by Thanos' father, for the sole purpose of killing Thanos. After missing his chance to kill his killer twice, Drax decides that he may as well be a good guy. If you can't beat him and you can't get sweet revenge on your murderer, join him. Bug out. Bug has been a part of Marvel since 1979, when the company obtained the rights to produce a Micronauts comic, based on the toy line of the same name. A Croy, the enemy, and the Micronauts Space Warriors, all sold separately. Bug was originally known as Galactic Warrior, but because the comic character looked nothing like the toy, Marvel changed his name and made him their own. Bug bounced around the Marvel Universe for years, eventually turning up with the newer Guardians. James Gunn was psyched about the idea of using Bug, but it didn't work out. He broke the bad news on the podcast The Movie Crypt. There was a really good chance Bug was going to show up in the first movie. Oh, really? But he is not. We do not own him. Also just barely missing from Guardians due to right squabbles? Fan favorite Ron the Space Knight, a toy-slash-comic crossover that Gunn also wanted to include, but Marvel just didn't have the rights anymore. The Collector's Collection there are a lot of fascinating things to be seen with the collector's collection, many of which are Easter eggs aimed at hardcore Marvel fans. These include Cosmo the Space Dog, what may or may not be Adam Warlock's cocoon, and even Howard the Duck. In a nod to his own film catalog, Gunn also included some of the alien slugs that terrorized the town in his 2006 film, Slither. So wait, does that mean that film is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? The mind boggles. Also originally intended to be part of the collection, Stan Lee himself. Gunn didn't think the first idea for his cameo was quite up to par, however. That's a shame, too, because the plan had been to show him as part of the collector's collection and have him flip off the camera. Road to Nowhere You may have noticed that the collector kinda lives in a giant floating head. 
The film doesn't go into it much, but the head formerly rested on the shoulders of a celestial, according to Marvel's official documentation. Celestials are a star-faring race of humanoid aliens who possess untold cosmic power. Standing 2,000 feet tall, the Celestials are clad in full-body armor. No Earth being has ever seen what they look like beneath their armor or knows their origin. Something else that remains unknown is how the head of one of these things even fell off and ended up as a port of call at the end of the universe. We don't want to meet the guy who can decapitate a half-mile tall god. New Endings Gunn's original version for the end of Guardians involved Peter Quill's grandfather played by Greg Henry. In an interview tied to the Blu-ray release of the film, he explained that Henry's moment in particular was just too much of a downer to keep. He has this photograph of Meredith, Peter Quill's mother, and Peter as a little boy, and he looks up at the stars and it was really sweet. It means that he must have seen Quill getting abducted at the end of that day and is still waiting for him to return. But it was freaking sad, so we took it out. Star-Lord and Starman Rock god David Bowie spent much of his career focusing on space. He famously played an alien in The Man Who Fell to Earth and even once led a band called The Spiders from Mars. You're really a freak. I don't mean that unkindly. I like freaks. So he would have been a perfect fit for the Guardians galaxy. Unfortunately, Bowie didn't live long enough to appear in the sequel. Like most of us, Gunn found out about Bowie's passing on Twitter and took to Facebook to express his grief. Just a very short while ago, Kevin Feige and I were talking about a cameo role in Guardians Volume 2, and he brought up Bowie's name. I told him nothing in the world would make me happier, but I heard from common friends he wasn't doing well. We heard back that he was okay and it could potentially happen. Who knows what that was about, but for whatever reason, it made my Twitter revelation more of a surprise. Oh, what might have been. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know any weird Guardians of the Galaxy facts you may know.